demonstrate endo suturing no no uh, demonstrated uh, by dr yeah, first line and christopher podcast. thompson well, uh, dr christopher on a porcelain model uh, can i just uh, also invite our next set of chairpersons very quickly i'd like to thank our current set of chairpersons but very quickly i'd like to invite our next set of moderators and chairpersons i'd like to invite dr ajay choksi dr as puri may i also invite uh, dr kunal das dr monica jain dr chirag uh, called the suturing arm or the needle driver so you can see that right there that curved arm is opening and closing with this handle and that's the needle driver okay so that's one part is the handle and the needle driver that's one part the other part is the the uh, suture passer or the needle passer which is coming in and out of my scope right here and I, I control that with this catheter and on the very end of that you can see the needle and that needle is uh, just visible now at the very tip of that needle passer. So when I close this handle and I advance the, uh, the needle onto that arm, you'll see the needle's being held by both that needle driver or the curved suturing arm as well as the needle passer or the pickup, okay? It's being held by both. If I push this blue button, it releases it and gives it over to that curved suturing arm if I don't push the blue button, it takes it back onto the needle, the, needle, the needle passer. So that's it. That's all you need to understand to be able to do this procedure. So this is a helical grasp, but it helps grab tissue. You can use the forceps. You can use different things for that. So that's the entire system. There's a way we tie knots I'll describe later. So now if we go and we're, we're scoping a patient, we would, we would say we're going to try to go over to the greater curve. Okay, down kind of near the antrum, we'll go to the greater curve, and we'll start as anterior as possible, and we'll take this corkscrew out and turn it three times, please. And we're going to go right into the tissue there, and we're going to grab the tissue, and we're going to pull it back if we can. This is thick pig tissue, so it's going to release. It's going to be a little harder to grab, so we're going to go a few more times. A little tricky. Keep turning. Here we go. And... We basically just put a stitch into the stomach, that quick and easy, and we'll release that. So now we have a stitch in the tissue there. And this is pig, so it's a little, it's a little slimy. Normally you wouldn't see that much kind of residue there. And it's important to see this part, because you want to see that little needle on the end that's, that's attached to the suture. We'll pull it back. We're going to close this suturing arm and reload it. So that's our first bite of tissue. Okay? We're then going to come down a little lower and repeat that. Right now here. Is this, Chris, is this on the opposite arm? Uh, side, uh, we're on the greater curve, so we're going to go anterior, greater curve, posterior. Okay. So it's kind of three, three stitches. Yeah, pig stomach does this. Try to get it again. There we go. And we can oh, unscrew now, yeah. Nice. And um, we just kind of keep doing this a few times. And just stand it up. You can see the tissue's coming together there a little bit. The idea is you want to get that to run through the tissue. Take our time. Try to clean up that, that, that little bit of residue because it being a pig stomach here. We get a flush. It's important when you do these to kind of have a foot pedal. Because uh, you'll get a little bit of stuff, so it's good to, and you really want to see this, because if you don't exchange it well, it's problematic. So this residue is, is something that's a little frustrating to deal with, but I think we're going to take our chances and see if we get the needle on there, and it looks like we did. So now we're going to do one more stitch down below. Again, if you notice, it's the same thing we're doing over and over again. We're going out and grabbing tissue with this little grasper here. He's going to turn three or four times. We're going to pull it back up if we can.
No, it's not quite yet. Get right there. Dr. Christopher? Yes. The indication for uh, suturing in this case, is it plication for obesity? Just obesity. If you have an obese person that wants to lose some weight, this is a good way to do it. And what is the BMI of this patient? <laughs> yes, this patient's got a BMI of about one, I think. But uh, <laughs> So you'll see here, we have our three stitches in place, right? Now, normally, we would even come up and try to do more. We'll see if we can do it. Sometimes in a pig stomach, it is hard to do this part because it's so thick. We're going to try to do it so you get the idea of what we're going for. Then you come all the way up here, and you repeat it one more time, usually. Dr. Christopher, what is your start point and your end point in the plication? So the start and the end point of this is it's usually six bites of tissue. And you, we've got this down pretty much, uh, pretty precise. We want to do six bites of tissue. We are completing six bites so sort of circumferentially almost. Circumferentially along that greater curve. So do we start from right from the pylorus? And we start, we start at the antral body junction. So we don't go to the pylorus anymore. The very first procedure, so we can take that out, very first procedures in the world for this were done in, uh, in India about four or five years ago. And uh, we did start at the pylorus in those. We've modified it since. We are leaving the antrum alone? Now we leave the antrum alone because it's just too violent a place to try to uh, suture, I think. So now we're coming on down. Right here, yeah. Now this procedure is not the quickest thing in the world, as you can see. Even though in the pig it's a little slower, I would say, than in a patient. It's taking a little bit more time in, in the pig model here for us. Okay, we'll Mr. Mr. That. Can you elaborate a little more on the device? The uh, out, speciality please. of the device, how does it really work? And how do you retrieve the needle time and again? So yes, so I'll, I'll talk through that. So we're going to wash my hands here. So basically I'm closing the suturing arm. I'm putting the needle back on the suturing arm by pushing the catheter down and pushing this blue button. And then I'm opening the suturing arm. And that's all I'm doing over and over again. It's always the same. So we'll talk through as we do our last bite here. Go ahead and acquire tissue. So this will be our sixth bite, which is the end of the plication. And we're acquiring that tissue with this little corkscrew here. Uh, Dr. Christopher? Yes. Uh, I see uh, 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 your handler is also has something in his hand. Is it, uh, what is it for? Yes. Yeah, so if you zoom in on this, you can see this is how we acquire the tissue. It's yeah. basically a spiral. And I'll let him describe it. Yeah, it's, so it's that just is for the anchor? Screw. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. have a mic on me, so maybe if I can get a mic. Can you put a mic? Uh, your voice is not so clear. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you are loud and clear. Yeah, so it's it's basically a cord screw kind of a thing, and when I turn it, when I turn it clockwise, it burrows into the tissue and allows Chris to take a <coughs> to take a bite, and then when I once he's done taking a bite, I turn it counterclockwise, and then it, it retracts and the tissue is released. It's fairly simple. So now we have all six of our bites in place. You can see where it starts right here, and it goes down all the way down, and then back over here to where it ends. So at this point, we drop that needle. You see the needle I'm holding right there? I drop that by pushing this blue button. And I take this catheter out. Then what we're going to do is basically run a knot down this suture. And I'll show you that's a separate device. So if you could hold this, we're done with that for now. You can just lay it down. This is the cinching catheter. So if you zoom in on it, you can see what I'm... Uh, yeah. So basically, it's a cylinder and a post. And the suture will run through the cylinder alongside that post. And we'll run it down the channel. And then when we get to the tissue, we'll pull it tight. 
and will jam this, the post into the cylinder, trapping the suture, and then it cuts. And that's how we tie a knot. So it's just threading this that we have to do next, which is uh, a little tricky, but we should be able to do it. So normally, you have assistants that do this all day long, they get pretty good at it. Uh, Dr. Christopher? Yes. May I ask this uh, stitching device that you are using, is it readily available in the U.S. and many other countries? This model, yes. You can get this. This tissue model is very uh, readily available. It's, uh, it's easy to, uh, to use. It's basically a pig stomach, if you could hold that under tension. He's, he's asking about the suturing device. Oh, oh yes, the device is widely available now in the United States. Um, I use it every week. Um, do several cases a week now. We, we probably do five cases a week uh, with this device, maybe more. So now endoscopically, you can see I have the cinching catheter in place, the cylinder in the post, and generally what we do is we just pull back the tissue to it. And we keep pulling that tissue back. And if you could just hold that right to there so it just doesn't move yet. We hold that back like that and just keep it right out so we can see those spiral rings. And now we've got a pretty good, a pretty good plication going there. So at this point, if you see this hand, basically what we do is we're going to drop the little safety mechanism out of it. And then usually your assistant will do this. They just kind of push this together like that and then it's, it's released. And you can see on the screen, that's the knot. It's a cylinder and a post. So that, that is basically a procedure. And we'll see what, what it looks like now. So that's the cylinder and the post. And you can see there's this kind of complex pillar structure down here now um, that is consuming that greater curve area. And normally we put about five of those, maybe six of those in along along the greater curve and it brings the entire greater curve down and, and uh, when they eat it functions very much like a sleeve gastrectomy would. So you can see that's kind of uh, consuming the volume. And that's the procedure. So we're just going to repeat that. So Chris, um, what is the durability of these stitches? So we know we have one year data that shows over 50% excess weight loss. Um, the, many of the applications are in place if you go back in the year and look, but many have fallen out. Mm -hmm. So it's not clear if the, there's scarring that happens behind there, um, if it's changed the configuration of the stomach, which I think there's some evidence that it does, uh, and it affects the function of the stomach. So. Um, you know, these staying in place doesn't, in, doesn't fully impact the durability, I think, but in the end, I think it may. I, who knows, at two years or three years, they might certainly gain their weight back. But right now, we have good one-year data that one suggests data. it works, yeah. So we like this. I think we like this better than balloons because, you know, you, you do get twice the weight loss, and uh, although it takes a little more time, there is more durability. Dr. Christopher, yep. what type of sutures are these? Proline. And uh, that's the other thing that it comes with is a bunch of these proline sutures. If you see here, uh, basically there's a box of proline suture, 2-0 proline suture. And uh, you, it comes with maybe uh, 10 or 15 of these. I mean, that's, that's pretty much all you need to do the procedure. Dr. Okay. Christopher, is there any comparative analysis of uh, this procedure versus uh, sleeve gastrectomy? So there's, you don't see the leaks you would see with sleeves because we're not resecting tissue. Um, um, and you know, I think that the safety profile is a good bit better because we're not violating the abdomen. So you just don't see the complications you see with the sleeve gastrectomy. However, the sleeve gastrectomy is resecting tissue and that, that is metabolically active tissue that has ghrelin production and other things associated with it. So the sleeve gastrectomy likely has more of a metabolic impact and probably is going to be a longer, uh, more durable procedure. Dr. Christopher, last question. Uh, any RCTs regarding endosuturing, endoplication versus laparoscopic plication? No. The there technique is also done laparoscopically, uh, plication on the greater curvature. 
So any comparison data between the two? Yeah, there are imbrication procedures the surgeons do, and there, there are no comparisons out there between the two. I think it'd be a great thing to do. There are some compar comparative studies, randomized controlled trials, looking at suturing versus a sham procedure, a fake suturing procedure, where the patient doesn't know if they got sutured or not. And those results are going to be presented this year at DDW for one of the companies that makes a device very similar to this. Um, so we're eagerly awaiting those results. And I think it's going to show that, uh, I was part of the trial, I'm pretty sure it's going to show that suturing is better than a sham procedure. Thank you. The device is same as it was used for the GRD procedure. This, this is the same device or there is some modification in this? I, 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 I'm having trouble hearing the question. I think uh, as far as safety, the, the device is no longer a prototype and it's been used hundreds and hundreds of times. Actually, we're at thousands of use in the United States alone. So we're pretty comfortable. It's FDA approved and it's for sale in the United States for closing perforations, closing fistula. Its indication is, uh, is, is broadening all the time with studies that are being done. So uh, the next big hurdle is now primary obesity where it actually is being used uh, in Europe and in South America a lot for primary obesity as well as in the United States.